We have Ben Gray joining us this morning. Good to have you with us, Ben. Thanks, Udoka. Great to be here on Plus TV. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, uh, let's talk about the British title el eliminator fight between uh, the Nigerian boxer Larry Akundayo and uh, Dale Evans. Give us more insight on what happened on that day. Well, that day, um, it was a title eliminator for the British title, which is a very prestigious uh, fight. Um, going into it, a lot of people thought um, Dale Evans was going to win that fight. He would, I think he'd had uh, 12 victories against Larry's nine. Um, but we, in our camp, knew that Larry, you know, believed that Larry was going to win that fight. Um, and so it turned out. He knocked him out, obviously, and uh, did a great job. Unfortunately, after he won that, he didn't get to fight for the British title. Oh, wow. um, so, you know, that's boxing politics for you here in the UK. And that's why it's so tough for Nigerian fighters, unless they fly under a, another flag. If, they, if Larry had flown under a British flag, it wouldn't be a problem. But... Um, yeah, so that's one of the, the, the reasons, you know, we need Nigeria to support Nigerians. Oh. All right, uh, let's talk about Larry Akudaya now. What, was, what, what has it been like working with uh, Larry? Uh, it's been an absolute dream. He's one of the, the nicest human beings that I've ever met. He's so professional. Uh, he's gone through an awful lot of uh, stuff personally, in his own personal life and professionally. So he's been injured and the family members have been sick. And every single time, every single moment, he's still really professional. Uh, he's a credit to himself, his family, and his country. Oh. All right. Uh, look, looking at your boxing cap now, do you have other Nigerian boxers, or is, is it just Larry Akundayo? So I've also worked with um, former world title challenger, uh, Lugashina Jose, who's okay. another great fighter, great human being. Um, he's come to the end of his career now. Um, so really those two uh, I work with, I'm always on the lookout for new talent as well, but you know, we've got to, we've got to make these elite fighters successful and then they can open the doors for all the other Nigerian talent. Oh. All right. Let's talk about, um, <laughs> boxing here in Nigeria. What's your take on the state of the sports in Nigeria? Uh, well, it's got to my mind, two huge problems. It's full of natural talent. Absolutely. You know, you guys should be ruling the world. It's that simple in boxing. Um, but there's two uh, problems I would really su suggest is you've got talent and the knowledge uh, with people like Salah from Salah Gloves, Wally Adun, even Nigerian Boxing Board of Control have uh, done a great job trying to harness the, the, uh, the natural talent. But um, there's no support really from the government or the um, corporates. And you're not going to deliver world champions without that level of support. Now, a couple of years ago, we actually um, uh, passed a motion in the House of Representatives, the Nigerian House of Representatives, calling on corporate bodies uh, to support uh, Nigerian boxing. But since then, nothing has happened. So it's been poor leadership, um, certainly from the previous sports minister. I know the, the new sports minister is going to uh, uh, really galvanize uh, some stuff around the sports. He's looks to me like he's doing a good job. But um, actually, I'll read to you a couple of the things. The, the motion that was passed in your own House of Representatives, so it urged the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports to charge the Nigerian Boxing Federation to revive boxing and po popularise it through boxing, continental events and international tournaments. That's not happened. The other key point was to call on corporate bodies, both public and private, to invest in the development of boxing through provision of infrastructure and sponsorship deals. Again, we've seen Anthony Joshua get sponsorship from uh, Africa, but we haven't seen uh, Larry or Tony Salam or other uh, leading Nigerian fighters get that same level of support. And until that happens, uh, it's going to be very difficult to deliver Nigerian champions. Now, what, what do you think is a big problem and how do you think we can do better? Well, apart from um, the corporates and the um, government getting behind their own people. Um, I think the other thing is you've really got to truly believe in yourselves. There's 20 Anthony Joshua's walking around Lagos right now. Oh. You guys, let me be clear, Nigeria can rule the world in boxing. You don't, you spend a lot of time looking at European football, but actually you need to support your own people. Oh. Um, right now, as I say, you guys could rule the world in boxing. Um, you just got to believe in yourselves. Yeah, uh, you, you talked about the politics over there in the UK. Is it a problem um, being a Nigerian fighter or is it a general thing with African countries? 
Um, it's uh, a thing for African fighters. So generally speaking, I've been when Larry won prize fight, I went to every single promoter in the country and um, they basically said they weren't really interested in signing an African fighter. Um, yeah, that's the stark reality of it. I mean, a lot of it's based on ticket sales. Mm. Now, Larry actually sells a lot of tickets, but the perception is that uh, because uh, Nigerians and Africans haven't traditionally supported their own fighters, a British boxing promoter is not going to take a risk on that. So until people support their own, there's always going to be a problem and a perception um, issue around helping uh, African fighters. The talent is there. That's not actually up for dispute. It's whether the support structure, if Anthony Joshua, for example, was living in um, Nigeria, he wouldn't be world heavyweight champion. His muscles would be still the same. His power would still be the same, but the opportunities wouldn't. And that's what we're really talking about. If we can level the playing field, the natural talent will take over. All right. Uh, talking about um, Anthony Joshua, we have a couple of fighters here in Nigeria who have decided to leave the shores of the country to um, acclimatize somewhere else for them to be well known. Would you say this is one of the reasons why these sportsmen and women get to leave the country to get better known out there? Yeah, well, the thing is that they, if you gave them an option to fight in Nigeria in front of a Nigerian crowd with their own people, they would choose that option over fighting overseas. Mm. But the infrastructure is not there. The support's not there. So you don't give them an opportunity. They have to go overseas. They have to fly another flag um, to get the opportunities that their talents deserve. And this is such an easy problem to fix. With a very small investment, a very small amount of money, comparatively, you would have, uh, you know, as I keep saying, you would rule the world in, in boxing. You've had, um, actually, uh, there's been three heavyweight champions that have been from Nigerian descent that Britain have claimed as their own. So, you know, those should have been um, joining Samuel Peter as heavyweight champions from Nigeria. Yeah. Wow. Um, sad one. In Nigeria here, we have a lot, lot of Nigerian fighters who fight in the streets of Lagos. But do you think we have world champions in each and every one of these Nigerians? Absolutely. Every single division, every single weight class, male and women, Nigeria could rule the world. Definitely. 100%. And the obsession with European football really is your own downfall because, you know, don't get me wrong, I love football. But um, in terms of delivering Nigerian champions or champion from Lagos or, um, you know, where, whichever part of the country, with a bit of joined up thinking, you guys, uh, you know, as I keep saying, would rule the world. Thank you very much. And lastly, as you go, would you want to quickly tell us how you met um, Larry Ekodayo? I was, uh, I used to work many moons ago for Lennox Lewis. So uh, I know boxing very, very well. And I went into a gym and uh, I was looking around. And I saw this kid sparring and I was like, who the hell is that guy? Um, you know, he must be a, you know, a well-established pro. And he wasn't. And someone told me it was Larry. So, uh, you know, I spoke to him. I said, look, let me see what I could do to help. And we've been on that journey ever since. Um, so, yeah, he's a, he's a great guy and uh, a great boxer. Thank you very much. Interesting conversation with you, Ben Gray, Larry Kundayo's promoter. Thank you.